Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. Me and Spice, we're just out here. I've been sitting on this rock just kind of thinking and trying to connect and feel where to go. And uh, anyways, I've been sitting here about 20 minutes and just enjoying it. It's finally starting to clear up a little bit. The sun's popped through a little bit. I got some blue sky around. And uh, I'm just gonna go adventure today and uh, just kind of go explore and see what we can find. And hopefully we can find something that leads to something else or just the great mystery of whatever it is I find. Um, you just never know what you'll find out here. So anyways, come along and let's go. We're gonna get right into it and, and I'm gonna take off from here and just start hiking around and see what I find. All right, well, here we are, me and Spice, we're just uh, going. I found this little hole, really interesting. Kind of goes back in there a little ways. Looks like it was burnt at one time and, and through here. We got a little cut here. But anyways, what I come to show you was this. Look what we found. Got an old Spanish cross here. I know there's meaning behind it. Some of it, some of the times it's to treasure somewhere or whatever. I'm still trying to figure out all the symboling and what they mean. But we're piecing it together as we go. Um, join along on the adventure and help me maybe decipher some of these symbols if you know what they are. Or if you want to study into them, I'm studying into them, and there's conflicting uh, stuff out there of what it means and what it represents. So it's really hard, hard to decipher uh, truth from fault, fault, or maybe they're both right in a way. I just, it's pretty hard to decipher. But anyways, we got this cross, and me and Spice, we're just going to keep exploring, and, and hopefully maybe we we turn something up and figure it out. But Spice. Come here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll be back soon and hopefully with uh, something cool to show you. Hey y'all, here we are, me and Spice still just uh, adventuring around and uh, look at that one I just found. I just ran into a old Indian camp. I ain't seeing any uh, remnants of anything they left behind besides sherds, um, pottery sherds. But this one's super cool. It's got the paintings in it, um, super cool, so. Anyways, I just wanted to show you. We're gonna... So I was just walking along. I was down off the hill a little bit, and I could see this black up here in here. So I, I walked up to come check it out, and we got a a big old cut under here. What really is piquing my interest right now is it looks like there's an old remnant of a wall right here. So most likely, just given where I'm at right now, um, I just found that pottery and uh, there's a lot of Indian camps around here. I would imagine at one time this was probably built up all the way to here and uh, this was a dwelling for somebody. That would be my guess. Um, not for certain because there's nothing around but this old this old wall. I mean, you can tell that's old and, and it was stacked here. So I would imagine that's what it is. Anyways, I'm just going to kind of sit right here and connect and uh, I'll be back soon. Well, here we are, I'm just sitting on this rock. I come and just sit down to think and uh, right when I sat down, I, I looked down and I found this piece of pottery um it's got the grooves and stuff in it i can't remember what they call it but uh to my understanding and i'm not sure that i'm right is this is the oldest pottery to find but i don't know um anyways just wanted to share that with you so this is definitely an old indian uh ruin just not a whole lot left of it so we're just gonna here sit here and feel this piece that i'm feeling right now What are you doing? Spice, come here. You know, I've just been sitting here. I've explored around a little bit, just looking, and there's old flint chippings and uh, different types of pottery here and uh 
I've just been sitting on this rock for a while now. I don't even know how long, quite a while, just thinking. And uh, just kind of, just try to imagine, I'm just trying to imagine, you know, possibly thousands of years, and, and I'm sure there's different generations that have come here just from the pottery that I found. They all, to my understanding, they come from different generations of, of times, and uh, which would make sense that at one time, a family found this and it made it their home. And then, you know, they were nomadic. They would move and follow the game and follow just that's the, the way they lived. And, uh, you know, and then they, they passed it on to the generations and the gen generations. And so, you know, it, it wouldn't be far-fetched to think that at different times they come back, you know, maybe 30 years later or whatever. Um, anyways, I'm just sitting here and, and I'm just thinking... And uh, I, I always like to reflect on my old life, not to for self-pity or anything like that, but just for gratitude of, of where my life is today and, and something that keeps, keeps coming back to me over the last few days and, and really strongly right now is in the depths of my addiction, you know, this was 25 years later, um, I'd just been just an addict my whole life and uh, you know I, I became an addict when my very first niece that was born um, and we were really close until she was like three and then I uh, you know became a full-blown addict and and I, I kind of abandoned her life and all of my family's life um, you know none of my nieces and nephews know Dustin not on drugs until now and they're just barely coming back into my life now and meeting the the real me not on the substances and well sadie keeps on my, my niece sadie she keeps coming on to my mind lately and uh something that she did throughout my addiction um and when i was homeless really changed my life and give me a a fire from within to to want to change because i I saw a little hope in that darkest moment of my life. Um, it was about a month before, month and a half before I uh, come out of addiction. My niece Sadie was getting married and uh, she messaged me on Facebook and we were talking and she invited me to her uh, wedding, um, November 3rd. And I told her, you know, I appreciate the offer, but nobody wants me around and, and you know, which was true, and I don't blame them. And she said, I don't care, it's my wedding, um, and I want you there. And I told her, respectfully, I decline. Um, I don't want to see you and ruin your day in the shape I'm in right now. And uh, she agreed, and I told her I would give her the gift of my sobriety for uh, her wedding. And I actually was supposed to start treatment just a few days before her wedding and I was going to spend her wedding in treatment coming off the drugs and uh, I ended up getting arrested the night before I was heading down on over to my parents and on a warrant and I spent a couple weeks in jail and then I got out and just went on the run again for about a month and was homeless up in Salt Lake and and uh, I ended up on December 29th I, I woke up in the morning after three days of being up and walking around in the in the freezing cold and in the snow, you couldn't sleep and it was just too cold. And I'd finally just uh, been defeated and I sat down on, on the sidewalk for a minute just to catch a break. My hips hurt, I couldn't walk anymore. And I fell asleep right at daybreak and I woke up about an hour and a half, two hours later and my butt cheeks were frozen, my hands were frozen. And that's the moment that uh, I decided to stand up and fight for my life in that moment and I went and I found a, a phone to call. I didn't have a phone at this time, no way to contact anybody, but there was there was resources out there to get a phone. And I, I got a treatment center to tell me that uh, they could bring me down and I had a bed for me the, the next morning if I could be in St. George by 8.30, I think it was. And so I'd, uh, yeah, I, I called my dad and, and they ended up answering that day. It had been months since I talked to them, but for some reason they answered and my dad came and found me. I wasn't even where I was supposed to be when he got there, and I'd fell fallen asleep, and uh, they got me to treatment, and I come in and went through treatment and everything. But um, 
that that was the start of my treatment and the changing of my life in that moment was I was finally broken. It was like in that moment, it was time to decide to either stand up and fight for life and have a change, the one I always wanted, or death. Um, that's where I was at. It, my life was better off dead if it continued that way. And so that's when I made the decision. And, and, I, and I guess my story and the point of it being is that in that moment where nobody wanted me around, and like I said, I don't blame them. I was 25 years of addiction, and, and that's what helped me the most is the fact when they finally said we've had enough, and and they didn't want nothing to do with me. Um, but my niece, Sadie, who I put through a lot of pain, and she's, I mean, she's experienced the, the full addiction of me, and she still wanted me there, and though I declined I, and I wanted to be there, I delivered her her wedding gift and gave her her, uncle sober and now I can show up and 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 I love my family and uh I guess I'm just kind of been thinking about that a lot so I want to talk about it um because she get she made the most difference in my life in that moment to give me that little bit of hope that hey somebody still loves me because at that time I didn't love myself I didn't feel love though now I know that that was just their act of love at that moment they just couldn't deal with me anymore and all the pain and suffering that I caused. And it, so it wasn't that they didn't love me, they just couldn't do it anymore after 25 years. And and that's when I had to go within and seek within myself and say, you know, it's me. Um, I gotta do something different. And so I have. Um, and so now today I'm just sitting out here and, you know, expressing gratitude and uh, just, living my life to the best of my ability in the moment and and not trying to get too caught up on future or past and I've left the past behind and that's why I can talk about it so easily is because I have I, I've left that man behind and I've searched within and now I'm starting to do this and so now I'm trying to go back into all them spots and explore them more and and uh, really discover who I am and so I'm having a hard time trying to go back, I guess. Um, not that it's hard. It's not, like, painful. Um, like I said, I've, I've healed it, and there's probably more healing to do on all that. And uh, I'm just exploring it again and, and going back into all the depths of my soul and, and going on that journey within and that adventure, which is kind of what I'm doing out here in adventuring old Indian camps and ruins and old Spaniard camps and just exploring the desert. Um, but at the same time I'm doing this, I'm exploring the depths of my, my own soul. And uh, it's a pretty amazing thing to experience when you can go inside and, and find that all that happiness and all that contentment and all that love has to come from within before it can ever be portrayed out into the world. And uh, it's a long process and it's hard and there's many times that I've wanted to give up on this path. And thankfully, I had my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to guide me along the way and give me strength when I was weak. And I'm still weak, but with him, I'm strong. And it's just a pretty amazing thing to be into that spirit and, and feel that love. Um, you know, I was a, I ran from God my whole life, and I turned my back on him. But that moment that I decided to turn back to him and accept him and and ask for forgiveness of of the man I was and, and ask him to come and be a part of my life, he was waiting with open arms, love, waiting with loving open arms for me. He's a father of love. He's a father of um, peace and understanding and wisdom. And it's just a truly amazing thing to experience. Um, what I've experienced in my past on homeless on the streets, I, I, and I'll go into it later, I've experienced uh, so much evil, and, and that darkness is out there. There's that dark, dark Satan is what it is, and, you know, I've experienced all that, and I followed him, and, and, and he followed me everywhere I went, and I was a good, I was a good servant of Satan, um, and so now I serve the Lord, and Jesus Christ, and uh, my life's just totally different today than what it ever was before, and 
and, and it's not doing to me. Um, it's just the grace of God on my life and all the blessings that he pours into my life are just amazing. I never have to worry about anything and I never have to worry about where am I going to stay tonight or how am I going to eat when I'm in places where I don't have money. I, I'm always provided through somebody inviting me to dinner or somebody inviting me into their home without asking, um, knowing where I'm at. And uh, it's just a pretty amazing thing what, what God can do for one who believes. And I just want to share that with you all. And uh, I'm just sitting here. I'm just at peace right now, feeling the spirit and just uh, kind of imagine the family that lived here, you know, was a, a husband and wife and, and if some children running around here and, you know, playing on these rocks and, and building tools and just whatever they do. And, uh, it's just pretty amazing to just sit here and feel it and, uh, just experience it and just relish in it. Um, I wish y'all could feel it, but you can't, and I'm giving you the best experience I can with through video and i appreciate every single one of you uh, i think i'm checking off now but uh unless i find something on my way back to the truck I'll, I'll be back but i mean we found the spanish cross today we found this indian ruins a little bit of pottery and and just explored and and i'm glad i was able to bring you on the journey today and just share a thought with you and uh, i love you all and i'm gonna see you soon please like share and subscribe and just do whatever you want to do. And, and I love you. And I wish you all just nothing but happiness and blessings upon your life. And uh, I'll see you soon.